Welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise and myself Jason bring you today a whiskey review into the Ardbeg Oogadal. So in the last video we did the 10 and now we're going to finish off this bottle of Ardbeg Oogadal, which I've already just poured myself and we're going to sort of work our way through the Ardbeg core range. Now if you don't know about the Ardbeg core range it consists of the 10, the Oogadal, the Coravegan and also the Ano. And these four whiskies make the core expressions for Ardbeg. Now, the actual name behind the Oogadal is named after the actual place where Ardbeg draw its water source to create the whiskies, and that loch is known as Loch Oogadal. Now, I'm just trying to remember the name Oogadal and its meaning in Scotch Gaelic, which I think means dark and mysterious place. Am I right? He thinks I'm semi-right. I think I am right. I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that in the comment section. But... That's what the name means, and this is from where they normally get their water source for making all the Ardbeg whiskies, which I'm hopefully going to go and see them, I think, in June. So it'll be kind of cool to understand the water source, and then also understand the whiskies as well. Now, this one is the second one in the core expressions, and I've just mentioned that, so I want to quickly just also cover on the stepping stones of these. So this one, in terms of the 10, it was at 46%. The Oogadal is at 54.2%. And then the Coravegan is around about 57.1%. And they do increase uh, in ABV the higher you well, sort of the further on you go. The only new one, the Ano, I think is at 466 So it's sort of between this and here. So in terms of my review style structure, we'll begin with the age. And it is another, no, this one's a no age statement. Um, the ABV on this one is 54.2. I think I just said that. Uh, the cast selection on this one are first and second fill X bourbon casts, exactly like the tin. However, it does also include sherry butts. Now, the distillery itself is the Ardbeg Distillery, as you can see over there. They are owned by the parent company, LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, and they're located in Scotland, in Isla. Now, Isla in Scotland, you'll see over here, very close to the neighbours of Lagavulin and Laphroaig. Now, the price on this bottle, I picked up this one for £52 in central London. Really happy with that purchase, but I'll, I'll get to that at the end of the video. Exclusivity-wise, it's not exclusive, and in terms of caramel colour, no colour is added to the, any of the Ardbeg whisky. They don't need it, so they are good as they are. So you'll see this one does have a slightly darker hue in terms of coloration. And this has got, it's not a straw gold like the other one. This is more along the lines of a copper. I'd say maybe a copper amber, copper gold, copper gold. Let's go with copper gold. Into the nose. So to start on the nose for the Ardbeg Oogadal, this one's got a little bit more, I, to me I find it a bit milder than a 10 year old, if I'm being honest in terms of comparison wise. It's got a little bit of a milder, peatier smoke. It's almost like you're smelling a fire burning in a distance away in a wetland sort of field. And you're getting that smoke coming out, but at the same time a little bit of that moisture in the atmosphere. You do get a little bit of a, a crackle of black pepper coming through, which I think is something of a house style that I'm finding through the yard bags. And this is also followed up by a candy citrus peel, almost like an orange candy citrus peel. It's following itself up from there, even with a little bit more spices now, a bit of a spice tray, all spice. It's almost like dry cardamom. I don't know, this feels, it feels to me, I don't know, I'm just sounding kind of freaky by saying this, but to me it feels like, almost like burnt marshmallows. Yeah, it's got that sort of like artificially sweetness, but then burnt. Let's get into the palate next. Into the palate, Slanger. So to start on the palate for the Ardbeg Oogadal, the peat on this one, I thought the peat explosion was big on this one. This is like a, this one, the Oogadal is like a hello, and there's like a boom, and you're like, there you got the peat. Getting a lot of heat coming through, actually on the back of the throat, which is very unusual. Normally I don't get that. It's got more of a pronounced peaty character on this one. You do get a little bit of a sweeter note as it's rolling off the edge of the tip of the palate. But in terms of the spice, you're getting like a spice tray, almost combined with this peaty character. You're getting characters of clove, cardamom, aniseed, nutmeg, black pepper. And this is all of these sort of spices are now almost you've taken them and you've dropped them into a heap of dark, rich honey. And the sweetness now is sort of just coming off the edge of that with that sweetness. Really intense on the palate on the first sip. Let's have a second sip. 
The second step is a bit more easier going. It allows you now to uncover the layers and the fruity, sweeter layers lingering just behind. First thing I'm getting, fruit cake. A nice, rich, juicy, succulent fruit cake. Sticky dates. Dark plums stewing in their own juices. Black cherries. And there is a little bit of a note just hidden on the back end that almost reminds me of almost like a combination of summer fruits like pears and black currants. And a little bit of apple. And it's got a medium texture. This one's a little bit richer than the actual 10 year old. So we're done in the finish and we'll come to our conclusion on the Oogadal. The finish for the Oogadal is quite long. It matches the 10, but it's got a little bit more of that sweetness, that rounded character. It's almost like you've taken layers of fruit, you've smoked them, you've combined them with this smoky character, you caramelize them all together, giving that extra sweetness, and they just hold each other tight, and these flavors just don't let go. Beautiful, and there's a little bit of spice playing on the back end of the palate and on the side. Really, I like this one a lot. Wow. Time to give my rating. This is this is this is something that I just this is why this bottle went so quickly. So the Ardbeg Ubidal is getting a 92 out of 100. Reason behind that, I think the value for money again, very important factor when you're looking at whiskies nowadays. Some are going into the hundreds. This is around about 50 pounds, I think is absolute fantastic. The combination for me personally of that sweeter, fruitier aspect from the sherry cask combined with that peaty character from Ardbeg is just something of pure genius and the way they work in harmony, I just love it. I love the peat, but I love this whiskey, the Oogadal. In terms of comparative whiskies, I'd actually go and as far to say as the Lag of All in 16 I've got to my left. These two are like my sort of, when I say peated whiskies or Isla whiskies, Lagavulin like 16 and the Ardbeg Ugadar are the two I always suggest to everyone when they say to me, should I try something from Isla that's a little bit sweet and it's also got that peated character? Those are the two. I don't really go too light in getting someone into peated whiskies, so I'll just try to let them sort of experience the beauty of these two styles. And that's something I really just love about this whiskey. Overall, I'm going to enjoy this dram. Value for money, yes. Does it need water? It's completely optional if you want to take it down to reduce that little sort of burn character in the ABV. But the flavors in this one are gorgeous. And I highly suggest if you haven't tried the Ugadal, you try the 10 and you like it, move over and try the... Sorry, if you haven't tried the 10, try the Ugadal. You'll, uh, you'll really enjoy it. And if you have tried that, either way, just give the whole range a go. I'm going to try the Cory Vega next and then we'll come to our conclusion on the whole Ardbeg range. But Ugadal so far, it's a winner. Give it a try. If you have enjoyed this video, by means, feel free to drop it a like. I'm going to leave the Ardbeg 10 video over here and the Cory Vegan will leave left over there. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you do, feel free to subscribe and uh, stay tuned and up to date with all my latest whiskey reviews and travels. On that note, this has been Jason Whiskey Wise and I'll catch you all for the next video. Slanger.